Oh, Whoa. Whoa, yes. I've always dreamed of this moment. Really? This exact moment? Yeah. Except in my dream, uh, you're living in Nixon, and we're making love, and we're not down to mine. You're a horrible man. Randy, we're rich. Well, we're not technically rich until we've extracted the gold. Oh, yeah, but how hard can it be to extract gold? <laughs> I've done some research and it's quite hard to extract gold. Yeah. And even if we could extract it, we'd still have to process the gold, have it valued, pay the mining tax. Mining tax? Yes. Yeah. Bloody typical. You know, I've been personally growing this gold for millions of years, and now the fat cats want to get their grubby fingers in my mineral pie. Well, that's it, I've had enough. I'm shutting up shop and I'm moving to Dubai. <laughs> now, how do we get out of here? Oh, I don't know, Sammy. Why don't you ask the dead guy? <laughs> And now it's time once again to cross to our New Zealand correspondent, Adele. And uh, let's get straight to the news this time, Adele. The Adele, blind is stuck. It's all right, just be gentle with the blind, it'll be all right. Just be gentle with the... That's great. Let's, Adele, how are you? A little flustered, because it always happens to me, and I still can't wrangle the new technology of the blind. <laughs> it's all right, Adele, you're fine. Just take a deep breath. Uh, now, I know your mother is powering the broadcast uh, on her... Bicycle generator. So let's not dilly dally tonight. Let's get straight into it. Let's get straight into the news. Are you good? I'm good, and it's Let very considerate of you to think of my mother, Paul. It's good. She's a lovely woman. I'm sure she's a lovely woman. Have you been talking to her? No, I've not been talking. <laughs> she's been talking to you. Oh, okay. <laughs> she's a bit psychic. Psychic is she? But anywho, good evening. This is the news. A 47-year-old Italian man with one leg became the first amputee to swim Cook Strait last week when his belt buckle got caught on a dolphin. Oh. <laughs> Adele, are you just making news up now? Are you just making... No, it's true. He's swimming around the world to raise disability awareness. I've got pictures. You've got pictures? <laughs> That's... That's not strictly... That's a drawing, I believe. It's a drawing, isn't it? That's Could, a drawing. That's a drawing. Could we possibly see some footage? He's only got one leg. That's all the footage he's got, Paul. <laughs> Don't be so insensitive. My, I didn't... I... <laughs> My apologies, Adele. I need to calm down a little bit. <laughs> Do you have anything else to report? Yes, I do. I just have to finish my celery. <laughs> All right, you just keep chewing away. That's certainly crunchy celery you've got. That's fine New Zealand celery. Are you the New Zealand Celery Tourism Board? <laughs> it sounds like very good celery you've got. An exciting news on the home front, Paul. My mum has got a new bicycle generator. It's a tandem. A tandem? That's right. My dad wanted to start a paper round. Mum takes care of the television and he does the newspapers, so we're a multimedia empire now. <laughs> Adele, Adele, I know we've been over this, but the bicycle generator that you have is stationary, is that right? That's right. And how can your father deliver papers from a stationary bicycle? Well, the neighbours all file through the living room one at a time. <laughs> and he throws the papers at them. <laughs> Mrs Jackson takes her corgi to his leg to make it more authentic. <laughs> That sounds a little bit labour-intensive. Not really. Labour-intensive is his bicycle courier service. <laughs> ah. Dad wanted spoky dokies for the wheels, but they don't sell them here yet. So Mum drilled holes in his kidney stones and used those instead. Oh. Oh, Wait, well, it's not want not. Bill. 
It's been an absolute pleasure as always, Adele. Thank you very much. Mum said, Mum yeah. said that if you wanted to come and stay, she'd make up the dog basket in the spare oh. room. <laughs> No, that's a, that's a lovely offer, Adele. But you I wouldn't don't know be I... allowed to go in my bungalow until we were married. Your bungalow? When I say bungalow, I mean my bungalow. What? <laughs> well, thanks, Adele. I think it's time to wrap things up. I'm afraid that's it for us. <laughs> 26. It's... Why do you want me to call you 26? It's my phone number, Paul. <laughs> Two six. Oh, two six. Two six. S six, not six. To six. Do you want to, to six? Oh, Paul, no. don't you taunt me, you man hussy. Put your shade. Put your shade in there. Don't stare at me. Our next guest is the flamboyant British billionaire behind the mighty Virgin Empire. He's been in Australia for a financial education conference and joins us now via satellite. Please welcome Sir Richard Branson. <laughs> Richard Branson. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Paul. Hello. <laughs> you look great. Thank you. Thank you. May, may I ask? <laughs> may I ask? Where are you, Sir Richard? I'm in a balloon, Paul. I'm Lord of the Skies! <laughs> I can see that, Richard, but can I, can I ask you uh, a, a personal question? Who do you have there with you? Flight attendants, Paul! Flight attendants! Yes! I never leave the house without a couple of beautiful women to offer me light refreshments and run me through the evacuation procedure in the unlikely event of an emergency. Uh, this is Summer. Hello, Summer. Summer. Yes, and this is Penelope. And in the middle we have the lovely Veronica. <laughs> <laughs> you were in Australia for a financial education conference yeah. featuring yourself and Eddie McGuire. How did it go? Well, to be honest, Paul, Eddie did most of the talking. It was quite a battle wrestling the mic out of his hands, actually. I was really just there as a bit of eye candy for the MILFs, I think. <laughs> Can I ask another question? Did you share the secrets of your success? At the oh, conference? yes, yes, Paul. I'm always more than happy to share, more than happy to share. The key is forward planning. Uh, rose petals on the bed, champagne on ice, Doobie Brothers cranking out the hi-fi. She'll be potty in your hands. No, 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 I mean, uh, this... The success of your business. Oh, the business! Yes, the business. Well, I usually start off with a gentle nibble on the earlobe. <laughs> and then I, I find a circular motion with the no, fingers. No, 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 Sir Richard, your actual business. Your oh. business. You currently own 400 companies through your Virgin label. 401, actually. I just launched Virgin Virgins. Virgin? Yes. <laughs> we're, we're, we're really tapping into the satanic ritual market. <laughs> Our frequent sacrifice program is a beauty. <laughs> Can't be beaten. Paul, on sacrifice. I like ah! that. Ah! <laughs> uh, do you, Richard, do you yeah. often travel by hot air balloon? Oh, all the time, Paul. I love it. I love it. Don't we, girls? We love it, yes? Yes, we love it. I'm an adrenaline junkie, you see. Like, right now, I'm thinking about jumping out of the basket just for the thrill of it. <laughs> well, I don't uh, think that's a particularly good idea. I'll do it, you know. I'm a crazy Peter Pan-like figure with youthful exuberance and unflappable <laughs> charm. Am I right, ladies? Yes? Oh, please, Richard, don't think do you about it. Do dare jumping. me? No, don't dare. No, come Double on, please. Double dare me? Richard, for God's yeah. sake, think Physical about it. Physical challenge! Richard. Geronimo! Sir Richard! Oh! Richard! Mr. Branson. Well, we appear to have lost contact with Sir Richard Branson. Well, for the time being. So we'll just move on with the show. And uh, we'll see what... <laughs> Are you all right? Yes, no, I... Do you need a moment? We can leave... Let's go to something else. No, we cut no, away? I'm all right. I think... I... I just... <laughs> Should that be like that? No, that's... Should that... that looks a bit... No. That's a bit grotesque. Let me just put it... There. Oh, oh, there we go. Ah. Are you all right? Did you need yes. a moment? No, let's crack on. Let's crack on. Yes. So, Richard, what do you do in your downtime? Well, I've been spending a 
lot of time rebuilding my Caribbean dream home after it burned down earlier this year. The whole place just went up. Do wumpf! Wumpf! Wumpfy! Wumpfy, yes. <laughs> I was running around naked, <laughs> carrying the mother, and oh, all sorts of shenanigans ensued. <laughs> It, just it, was like, it, was like, it was like a carry-on film. <laughs> carry-on dicky. <laughs> Sir Richard, your yes, next plan Paul. is to fly tourists into space with Virgin Galactic. Mm. How much will it cost the average passenger? Two hundred thousand dollars. Two hundred thousand dollars. That's correct. Yes. Uh, what What do you get for two hundred thousand dollars? You get to travel in a futuristic Virgin Galactic spaceship for a glorious God's eye view of the Earth that only a handful of people in the known universe have witnessed. And a muffin. <laughs> Not even a sandwich? No. In space, no one can hear you safely restow your tray table. <laughs> Sir Richard, that really doesn't answer my question. Well, you should have thought about that before you asked it. <laughs> you know, I'm not sure if I'm Richard Branson or Colonel Sanders at this point. <laughs> Well, Sir Richard, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for choosing to interview Richard Branson. If your mobile phone is in easy reach, you may now switch it back on. <laughs> Sir Richard Branson! Tonight's smart question. Who did Liz Hurley recently announce her engagement to? Was it A. Shane Jacobson, B. Shane Bourne, or C. Shane Warren. For your chance to win a fantastic Samsung Galaxy S2, SMS A, B or C plus your name and address to 1977-2222. Or log on to 10.com.au forward slash good news world. The answer of tonight's question is C. Shane Warren. Yeah, yeah, thanks. <clears throat> uh, and now, with his healing look at the world of good news, it's time for Tom Gleeson with Storm in a Teacup. <laughs> to help, Tom. Thank you. Are you good? Mm, very relaxing. Mm. So, can you tell me, what's caught your eye this week, Tom? I'll tell you this, Paul. Next time I buy marijuana, I'm going to buy it in Bali. Mm. <laughs> I am. I'm going to go over there and buy it in Bali because if I get caught over there, I'll just be some innocent Aussie who's been trapped by some corrupt foreigners. <laughs> if I got caught buying pot in Australia, I'd just be another bong head bonging on in a KFC car park. Whereas if I got caught over there, I'd be an innocent young Aussie full of potential with my whole life ahead of me. Yep. Oh! <laughs> I'm really worried that the cups are getting stronger. <laughs> it's a strong cup of tea, that one. I'm not even sure. I need more tea. more tea. Yeah. <laughs> you want, that's, a, that's a nasty brew, too, now. That's good. Forgive me, I've just got to get angry. <laughs> okay, where was I? I can snap you. I can snap you. I'm all angry. I can't even remember why I was. Okay, I'm ready now. You're yeah. useless. You've never been good at nothing. <laughs> You're not yeah. like your brother. Your brother's worth something. Thank you. You're no good. All right, I'm ready. You've got lazy spurs. I know. I remember. I remember. I've got the motivation. If I was caught here buying pot, I'd just be another bong head in a KFC car park smoking bongs. If I got caught over there, I, I'd, I'd be a young Aussie with my whole life ahead of me. No. Oh. <laughs> Uh, you've broken the set now, you idiot. What have you done? I think the cup's too strong. <laughs> you're you're right down there, mate. Are you want to clean up your face? <laughs> there you go, little fella. <laughs> Don't worry about him. Anyway, the whole thing over there that upsets me the most is, you know what they say? They always go on about the fact that no, no, it was a trap. It was a trap. They, they trap you. That's what they do in Bali. They trap you. You know how they trap you? They go around and they offer people drugs and then those people go, yes, please, I'll have some. <laughs> That's how they trap them. Because they tried to trap me. And you know, they, they said to me, would you like to buy some drugs? And I said, no. You know why? Because I've got a memory in which I've stored things like Chappelle Corby in the Bali night. <laughs> I remember shit. That's why I haven't been trapped. What I'm trying to say is, when you go overseas, just do whatever you want. Do whatever you bloody well want! Because foreigners are dodgy and Aussies are ace! <laughs> <laughs>